man was yesterday a crazy way to start off the early national signing day period real quick i want to say thank you to everybody that was in the live stream yesterday we had a seven hour live stream where we almost got through all of the we almost got through all of the recruits choices i didn't go to sleep the night before I was basically falling asleep on the back end of the stream, but I want to say thank you to everybody that was in the stream yesterday. But if you were not in the stream yesterday, it's all good to make up for you. You can just leave this video a like and hit that subscribe button and turn your notifications so you don't miss when we go live the next time. But if you guys were missing some of the things that happened during the early National Signing Day period, I am going to be breaking down some of the biggest takeaways that we saw from day one. And first and foremost, we'll just get the most obvious one out of the way. Obviously, the SEC is going to be the recruiting kings. Alabama, Georgia, and Texas A&M very firmly separated themselves from the pack, letting everybody know that they're going to be able to get pretty much whatever recruit that they want. With all three schools pulling multiple five-star and high, high-caliber four-star recruits, the SEC is just going to keep on being dominant and is going to be run through Alabama, Georgia, and Texas A&M for the foreseeable future. All right, now I'm just playing. Now let's really get to the biggest event that happened during the early National Signing Day period. And that, of course, is Florida State. Florida State fans, y'all need to be worried. And no, losing Travis Hunter is not the real biggest reason why you guys should be worried because honestly, you guys did a very good job of picking up a replacement to Travis Hunter in Azariah Thomas, who is an extremely athletic kid. Obviously not the same caliber of player as Travis Hunter, but is still very, very talented player. However, where Florida State really needs to be worried is the rise of Miami. Florida is always going to be able to recruit extremely well, but now that Miami has Mario Cristobal there and Miami pulled some top players not only in the overall class but top players from Florida Florida as a state already has troubles with Alabama basically the rest of the, the whole SEC pulling most of the the top tier talent from Florida and then when Florida State cannot lock down it's the rest of that in-state talent because they're losing it to Florida and now Miami and with Florida State being in the ACC, which is not attractive at all. I mean, you go to, you go, obviously Miami's in the ACC too, but they got Mario Cristobal there who's clearly proven that he's starting to heat up Miami. And then if you don't, if, then Florida is always gonna be uh, an enticing option because they're in the SEC. Clearly losing a player like Travis Hunter is a big deal. However, I think the scarier thing that Seminole fans should be worried about is the rise of Miami. Because if Miami, not, not only being a team in the same conference, Conference starts to beat Florida State and rank higher overall in the ACC at the end of the year than Florida State. It's going to be really tough for Florida State to continue to pull five star recruits and high top tier four star recruits. Period. All right, I was just messing with you before now. Okay, for real, this time I'm actually being serious. Let's actually talk about Travis Hunter flipping from Florida State to Jackson State and joining Deion Sanders. Okay. Now, I think that there's a lot here to unpack, so I'm going to try and do my best to kind of keep this as short as possible. Okay, so first and foremost, the, the, the NIL deals are here to stay. The name, image, and likeness deals, these are here to stay. This was not 100%, but probably a cool 51%, definitely in the majority, to favor Travis Hunter to get the biggest bag that he possibly can going into college and I love every bit of it. First and foremost, for those Florida State fans who are genuinely mad at a high school senior because he didn't go to your school and he, and he chose to do something that is gonna better his family for the rest of their lives, you, you, come on, stop it, get, get some help. You, you, you're looking foolish out here, like come on. This is, this is honestly one of the greatest business moves, I just moves period in all of college sports. Travis Hunter is probably the most Deion Sanders like recruit to come out of high school in the past 10 years. When you when you look at all of the other freak athletes that have come out, none have looked as Deion Sanders like or played as Deion Sanders like is as Travis Hunter has been. Okay, so you take that and you can turn him into a five star receiver or you could leave him at corner, which obviously is what's going to happen and have a arguably the greatest cornerback of all time who plays just like how Travis Hunter plays, teach him every last little tip trick and technique that he knows to, to play the cornerback position. So that's number one. Number two, for anybody who's saying, oh, but he's going to be at the FCS level. So he's not, he's, he's not even going to get a chance to play in the NFL. 
Uh, I, I don't know if you guys were paying attention to this past draft, but there was a guy by the name of Kyle Duggar who came out of Lenore Ryan College. Uh, that's Division Two, and he was taken in the second round. Uh, so Division Two was taken in the second round, and Travis Hunter's playing in a higher division than that. Yeah, the, ta talent is quite evident to see wherever it is on the field. Travis Hunter can go out there and be the best cornerback in the entire FCS, and he could be taken as a top five pick as one of the best cornerbacks in the in the country come come his draft year. That 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 is not going to mess with them at all. If anything, it's going to give him more time to really refine his, his technique and his talent versus inferior competition, especially at corner. He could really learn how to how to bait, how to bait uh, quarterbacks, how to set receivers up, all that. Obviously, FCS level ball is still very high level football as well. And last but not least, I honestly believe that this is one of the best moves that a that a high school player has made as far as just setting his life up in a positive direction. Travis Hunter, I don't know if you guys, I don't know if you guys pay attention. Travis Hunter is a very ostentatious, a very lives for the show type player. And you're about to, and he's about to, whether he went to Florida State or to Jackson State, he was about to come into a lot of money. Just his presence, he, whatever NIL deal he signed, he was about to get a bag regardless. But you're going to be putting him with a guy who's already made all the, the potential mistakes that Travis Hunter would make in Deion, Sam, in Deion Sanders. Deion could teach him how to properly invest, save, how to spend his money, how to, how to have his money make money for him. He could teach him how to enjoy, how to, how to enjoy his money without, without overdoing it. Like, it's li literally, this is going to be one of the, the best situations to just develop Travis Hunter, the man. Not Travis Hunter, the athlete or the football player or whatever. Travis Hunter, the man, being under Deion Sanders' wing. One of the greatest moves I have ever seen. When you really, when you really look at, at all of the, all the interconnecting details of this move, this was just one of the greatest moves to ever happen for co for college football too. Because now you got HBCU football that could potentially be now back on the rise. Pretty much, you just got to get better coaching to build up the whole league. You can't just have everybody go to Jackson State. But if there's more money pumped into HBCU football to build it back up to just do, do your research on HBCU football. They used to be running stuff, but yeah. But so it, this is literally probably one of the biggest moves to happen in college football in the past decade for sure. And the last takeaway that I wanna hit on that happened during the, er, the first day of the early signing period is Texas and Michigan, they're here to stay and to make some noise. Now, obviously Michigan in the college football playoffs, they proved that they are, they, can not only get it done, but they're they're capable of actually going to the highest heights of college football. Texas struggled last year. However, with all the additions that Texas made, not only with picking up Quinn Ears in the transfer portal, but all they had three flips yesterday, and they picked up just some absolute huge weapons on both sides of the ball. And then with Michigan, they did lose out on Deion Walker, which was kind of a big, which kind of a big deal. But they went out and they picked up all of the other every other recruit that was linked with michigan they they got they they only lost one guy which hey that's that's honestly that that's those good odds when you look at other teams i'm, I'm sorry y'all gonna be the talk y'all are gonna be the joke of college football for a minute i'm sorry i'm sorry yeah texas is looking to end its time in the big 12 strong when heading into the sec and so if they're if texas is able to keep on recruiting like this and keeping the top talent in texas into at ut hey texas legit might be making a comeback and these michigan ohio state games over these next couple years are going to be very fun to watch with that being said those are my biggest takeaways that happened on the first day of the early national signing day period it was an absolute crazy day uh, we're probably going to be doing another full day stream on Friday because there's uh, Damani Jackson and uh, I forget there's a, there's a couple big names that are that are making their uh, decisions on Friday. So I'll probably be doing another all day stream. So again, be sure to hit that subscribe button and so you know, turn on all notifications so you know when we go live. With all that being said, I love and appreciate all y'all. I will catch you guys in the next video. Ciao.